Hello everyone, Ogre27Kane here today, and we're doing something a little different, a little special. We're going to do a top 10 of my personal Rare Switch games. Now, all of these games are North American games. They are based on eBay prices as of February 2023, and these are all NTSC versions. All of the games that you're going to see here today are just regular box versions. There are no collector's versions or anything special. There are some limited run though. Let's start out with number 10, Outbreak Contagious Memories, 55 to 60 US. Now this first game here is a Resident Evil style clone. The cool thing about it is it gives you options to have a first person camera, a third person camera, or even use the old static style backgrounds from the original Resident Evils. Now this game originally came out as an Amazon release and was fairly cheap, I believe around $40 or so, but as it's gotten a little more rare, the price just seems to keep going up. I recently picked this up and I had to pay $60 to get it. It's not really a $60 game, but sometimes you have to pay what you have to pay to get the games you want to play. The visuals are chunky, the combat is slow, the monsters aren't too scary, and everything doesn't seem to really flow. I will say though, they do a good job getting the B-rate horror down in this, and that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to pick it up, was to see if they could mimic any of that old school B-ness. Well, anyways, let's hit number 9, Octopath Traveler. Yep, this game's actually gone up in value, especially with the new release. It is $60 to $70 now on eBay. Kind of crazy because a few years ago this game was $20-$30. Now, I personally really enjoy this game. I put about 80 hours into it myself. Having all of the different storylines intertwined, all eight storylines with an old school 8-bit JRPG feel is really unique. And it gives a lot of replayability to this game. The other thing I really want to say about this game is it has an amazing art style and graphics to it. You just can't match this anywhere else. This HD 2D that Square Enix is onto is absolutely amazing to me. I think although still fairly common, this game has become more and more sought out because people have begun to realize it's a really high quality game too. All the stories are well written, even the characters you don't really care about in this game, you still want to see their stories, and they all have a pretty satisfying ending. And then you can kind of tie everything through if you're like me and a perfectionist and absolutely have to finish everything on your games. Having played the Bravely Default series as well, they do have similar combat systems, but this one in my opinion is a little more satisfying. It works a little better and it yields itself to having multiple big enemies on the screen. Well next up we're going to hit one of my favorite Metroidvanias of all time. Number 8, The Mummy, Demastered, $60-$70 to $70 US. This got a digital release originally from Way Forward. But then they finally released it physically through Limited Run, and I absolutely had to pick this up. I'm glad I only paid the $35 when I did, because this game is a little more rare, and I see this game going up in value increasingly over time. One of the things that helps a game like this go up in value is the quality of the gameplay itself. WayForward did a fantastic job on this. I also own their previous attempt at this kind of genre with the Aliens game for the DS, and that one's just as good. I recommend if you've ever played either of these games that pick this up because this will not be around in a year or two. Although loosely based on the reboot with Tom Cruise, this story is its own standalone and it did a really good job. They, do, they make you want to really follow these characters and get involved. Well, let's get on next to number 7, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, $65 to $75 US. Now when Aspire originally put this game out digitally, I sat on it, and then I didn't. I bought it digitally. And then Limited Run announced it, and I paid for it then as well. This is one of my favorite old RPGs from back in the Xbox days, and this game is fantastic. If you enjoy anything that Bioware did before Jade Empire or anything like that, then you will truly enjoy this game. It was worth the double dip, and this is something I want to keep in my collection for a long time. They also announced a physical release for the second KOTOR, which Unfortunately, yeah, they got me on that one too. These games are fantastic. If you enjoy anything that really is involved with the Star Wars universe and a well-crafted RPG, then you really can't find anything better than this. The ability to ha have good and evil characters and make choices in the Star Wars universe allows itself a little unique 
um, tendency to create different gameplay scenarios. Which, if you know anything about the Star Wars universe, is pretty difficult. They're pretty strict on everything. Well, let's hit number six, Xenoblade 2, Torna the Golden Country. Now, currently this game sits between $65 and $75 US, but this game has fluctuated a lot over the last few years. If I would have made this list last year, this probably would have been number two. This game has gone up as high as $150 to $200 around the release of Xenoblade 3. I don't really understand why per se, because there really isn't that many Xenoblade fans out there. But at the same time, it is really cool to have a full standalone DLC as its own physical package. Now, if you are a fan of the Xenoblade series, then this is definitely a game you want to own. It has everything that was cool about Xenoblade 2, only refined and much better. Having still not fully finished everything in Xenoblade 2, it kind of is interesting to dig into this game and learn some of the backstory as you go. And if you really want, I almost played them simultaneously because I did buy them together. Well, let's hit number five. Yeast 8, the Lacrimosa of Donna. This game is $70 to $75 US right now. Now this is another game that has fluctuated greatly in price. I've seen this game up above the $100 mark. I've seen this game as low as the $40 mark. It changes. I bought this game originally brand new for $60 and then I ended up selling it, buying again for $70 and sitting on it and now I've just been watching it. Now that's not to say anything about the quality of this game because the quality of this game is absolutely fantastic. This is my favorite game in the entire East series. If you've played any of them and are familiar with the main character at all, Kristen, then you'll know that they're all pretty good. But this one in particular kind of emphasizes everything that they were trying to accomplish while giving you a huge island that's fun to explore. I love Yeast 9, but it does not have the world that Yeast 8 has. I know they did talk about a reprint for this game, but I don't know if it ever happened, and if it did, if it impacted the price at all. So, I recommend picking this game up while you can, because it is the best one to get. Now, let's hit number 4, the Guacamole 1-2 Punch Collection, 75 to 80 US dollars. Originally, I bought this game on eBay for about $25. At just after it released, it was almost like they were practically giving it away. No one seemed to want it or even care. So, happily, I grabbed it and held on to it and adored it and played the hell out of it. Well, guess what? Now this game's worth quite a bit of money, and rightfully so. A lot of these games that you're going to see that are really valuable nowadays are Metroidvania in their formula, because it allows them the ability to make some pretty good games. Not only that, but they gave you both 1 and 2 combined on the cartridge, with no need for downloads or patches or anything. That's pretty awesome. It's a standalone game you're going to be able to play well into the future. Now one of the highlights of this game for me is the comedy. You can see on screen right here it's all based on a luchadore and everything in this game is hilarious from fighting chickens to the dialogue you hear from bad guys. It's great. It's gold. Now time for one of my favorites at number three, Salt and Sanctuary. This game's going for between $75 and $100 now. I paid about $40 for this game on release and it's a pretty awesome package. It has the soundtrack with it and little booklet and everything like that and a map. I really, really love this. So this game is probably the best take you'll ever see on 2D Dark Souls. I, everything about the mechanics in this game is almost impossible to believe that they were able to pull off such a close variation while on a 2D plane. I know the art style is a little off-putting at first, but you'll kind of learn to really love it. By the end of the game, I really didn't want it to end, and while there is a new game plus feature, it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't give itself any more to what you can find. You're basically just going back and looking for better weapons and better stuff, and just exploring the world after that. I do want to say though, on your first playthrough, this game will shock and awe you at how good it really is. Each boss seems to get bigger and better than the last. And the cool thing is it's not just the same old dodge and hit, dodge and hit. A lot of them have unique patterns that require you to really think about it. 
Well, let's jump into number two now, Time Spinner, 80 to $100 US. Once again, we have another limited run Metroidvania. I bought this game from Best Buy for 20 bucks, and although it's fun, it's only about five to six hours. You're not gonna get a huge amount out of this game. So the fact that it's going for as much as it is right now is kind of a testament to how fun that five and six hours is. I know with limited run games, everybody is trying to fill out their collections, but rightfully so, the games that are highly valuable are the good quality games, and this is definitely one of them. It kind of surprised me, I did not expect to spend such a little amount and get really such a good Metroidvania out of it. It has a lot of uh, Castlevania Symphony of Night type features to it though, and if you're not familiar with that game, this might be a fun little excursion for you. I, however, am an old Metroidvania fan, so this just scratched an itch for me. And really, the only disappointing part about this game is its length. Well, let's get to number one now, Dust and Elysian Tale. This game, folks, is going for $160 plus now. I think I paid around $65 for this game, and I was mad that I had to pay that then. Holy cow, I'm glad I did, because this game just keeps going up in price. And rightfully so, it's a fantastic game. If you enjoy Metroidvanias, you'll enjoy this. The combat system in this is one of a kind. It kind of allows you a little bit of freedom to basically fly around the entire screen and giving you aerial options on top of that. The other thing about this game is it's kind of old now and some of the mechanics are a tiny bit dated. But don't let that push you away from it. You'll still enjoy it if you like Metroidvanias. I love the art style on this and it's almost like playing a really graphic Disney game. <laughs> Well, that was my list of my top 10 most valuable games for the Switch as of February 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. Within three months, this entire list could change, and that's the way it works right now with video games, folks. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. This video was a blast to make, and this is Ogre27Kane, signing out.